Hey y'all, welcome to the realm of comics. If you've already been here, thank you for coming back. If you're new here, like I said, welcome. Glad to have you here. So today, 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 as you can see from the title of this video, we are gonna be doing a first impressions video, but we are gonna make it a little spooky. It's a little spooky situation. So basically, first impression videos, these are all over MangaTube. They're a great way for people to kind of share like their first thoughts or their first impressions of a manga series when they initially started. I have a shelf full of manga. <laughs> with series that I have not started yet. So I thought it would be cool if I picked a couple of maybe like horror, thriller, or mystery manga off of my shelf and read them and gave y'all my first impression. So I ended up picking up two stories, two stories, two new series that I've been meaning to read. One I haven't even really technically hauled yet on this channel. And I don't think I've hauled, I haven't done a haul on this channel. I don't know what I'm talking about because I haven't done a haul on this channel at all. But both of these, um, I recently have purchased one older than the other, but I decided to pick these up and use these as a first impressions because it's still October and it's still spooky season. And I thought that these would be great for spooky season. So I ended up picking up Alice in Borderland by, and that's upside down genius of me and they're picking up Alice in Borderline by Hiro Aso and then Chainsaw Man volume one by Tatsuki Fujimoto and <laughs> I have very different opinions about both of these so we're going to go ahead and start with Alice in Borderland. So Alice in Borderland focuses on a main character by the name of Arasu who is 18 years old and is pretty much sick of his life. He has no motivation. He feels like he has no skills. He has a younger brother who is a lot more successful than him. He feels like he is pretty much invisible to his family and so he spends a lot of his time not really being productive, skipping school, not really doing much of anything. Like just no excitement about life and he has a close friend as well who pretty much is the same way and then they have a third friend <laughs> who is a middle school dropout but he's running his own bar and so they meet up there one day and they're just pretty much talking about the fact like oh you know life would be so much easier if like there was a virus that wiped out all of the human population or life would be easier if there was like a zombie apocalypse or something along those lines so they decided they're going to go out walking and they are tired they stop and then they start seeing these fireworks in the distance and then all of a sudden there's this huge explosion which threw them off because they're like well these fireworks must be closer than we anticipate and it takes them to an alternate reality called Borderland. Now in Borderland it's very interesting because it's set up where people essentially have to play these horrific sadistic <laughs> games in order to get a visa to extend the time in which they have been in borderland it is a very interesting concept not one that is particularly unique i would say because it's it's something that i have seen like thematically not the exact same story but it is something that i've seen thematically in manga series before but what i do like about this one is the character development and how how high stakes these games are they are gritty they are cruel and when you think you understand how one game particularly works it completely throws you off by the time you get to the end of the chapter so this is actually a bind up of volumes one and two they are re-releasing these in these complete collections for these Viz Signature collections. And so we're getting two in ones. I think that we're already up to volume three. Volume four should be releasing, I think either in December or January. So really, really quickly. This read particularly fast. I think that the artwork is really intriguing. It very much so keeps pace with the plot of the story. I think that I'm really going to enjoy seeing Arusu kind of, I guess, grow as a character because he has such a lack of confidence in himself. He doesn't feel like he's valued or he's important, but as you kind of see him work through the games and in this particular bind that we get to see them go through two games, I won't tell you what the games are, I won't give you any particulars about it because I don't want to spoil it, but you see him kind of build his confidence and really realize the analytical skills that he has that I don't think he realized were present when he was living in 
our actual reality and not this kind of like alternate reality. In this volume, we don't really understand like where Borderland comes from, who's running the show, why people are being brought there. We just kind of see it as a strategic life and death type of situation. We get to see a lot more characters by the time you get to the second part of this. You get to know a lot more characters who I think are going to be more pivotal to the actual story as we get through more chapters in it. I'm really interested. There's one particular character who I'm not going to really talk much about, but there is a particular character that I am very, 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 very interested in watching going forward because I think he has some knowledge about Borderland that is going to be revealed specifically through him. There are a couple characters that clearly have been in Borderland prior to the trio of friends arriving, but I think that this one character has a sense of exactly how this world is functioning and what it's gonna take in order for them to all make it back home. I think that the games are just going to get more sadistic. There's clearly a pattern to how these games are done and how they're structured. I don't even wanna go into details about that because it's part of the thrill of the story is finding out exactly how these games operate and how <laughs> how dark they are and so one of the things that's really interesting is that I think people are going to probably read the first half of this and be like I don't understand the connection between this and Alice in Wonderland because clearly you're seeing here like Alice in Borderland and I promise you the connection is there but you have to wait until you get towards the end of the second part for those dots to be connected so I can understand why people like this one better than Zom 100 uh, that's the same mangaka behind Zom 100 which I am currently reading Zom 100 as well but I just decided to check out Zom 100 from the library because it's gotten so many mixed reviews. This one seems to be a more solid series that people are enjoying and really are appreciating the storytelling and the artwork in this one. I think Zom 100 is like pretty like jokey jokey kind of funny and I think if you're not really into that humor or the kind of repetitiveness of the plot line then you're not going to enjoy that one as much. So if you have read Zom 100 and you didn't like it I would definitely recommend checking this one out because it's like night and day. They're, com they're two completely different things. This one definitely has darker tones. It's a lot more serious which is interesting because I think in the beginning we see that our characters are not as serious. They're kind of lackadaisical about everything but once they get into this alternate reality of Borderland it's kind of like okay like we have to start getting serious because this is life and death and we have to start appreciating the life that we have and value whatever skill set that we have and really put it to use because this not being serious and being jokey and taking everything like as a joke is not going to work that's exactly how you end up dying in borderland so i am so excited to pick up the volume two i already have it sitting in a cart <laughs> ready to go because the story just ended in a way where I'm like I need to pick up the next volume now so this one definitely got a four out of five star rating for me okay so the next one of, I did not enjoy as much as Alice in Borderland which is super unfortunate because I wanted to like it as much as Alice in Borderland but it was a solid read but just not my favorite start to the series Chainsaw Man by Tatsuki Fujimoto this is an interesting story it focuses on a uh, young boy by the name of Denji who pretty much has nobody in the world except his dog that is technically a devil so humans and devils coexist in this world but not in a good way like devils there are good devils and I think Fujimoto kind of plays with that idea of devil not necessarily being the equivalent of evil all the time and that humans have associated all devils as being evil but that's not necessarily true so he has Denji has this dog that is technically a devil that is has a chainsaw coming out of his back and so they work together in order to help Denji clear his debt which was super high and I think what's interesting about that is that this whole theme of like endless debt that you can't pay off and you're willing to do anything to get rid of this debt is something that I think a lot of Millennials will be able to relate to I don't know if that's Fujimoto's like expectation that was what was in mind when writing this but I think that is something that is relatively um, it is relatively something that people I think can connect to, especially millennials. But as the story goes on, we find out that Denji is definitely involved with the Yakuza and owes them a lot of money and then things go left. And he ends up kind of morphing bodies with his demon devil dog and so he becomes Chainsaw Man. 
Now, I thought the concept of this was pretty unique. I like the idea of this kind of paranormal element of humans and devils coexisting and kind of being at battle, but also in some instances, maybe working together in order to keep the world safer. But there is a point in which we kind of swerve a little left because Denji, I think you have to understand Denji's backstory. Like Denji has not had much human interaction. He's pretty much treated like an animal. He can barely take care of himself because he doesn't have the money to. He's not looked after, he's not shown love, he's not shown care. He hasn't had much human interaction, whether that's emotionally, mentally, or physically, in a very positive way, I'd say that. And so he kind of veers left when he meets uh, a woman which is this classic shonen kind of theme here where we see a we see a boy become obsessed with a girl and he becomes obsessed with I just really want to touch boobs and so it's very weird because it's kind of like it's jarring to some degree because it's kind of like thrown in there you're like okay but then it's kind of like I get where he's coming from to a certain extent not fully but that lack of human interaction and human connection I think is what drives him to be so I don't want to say carnal because carnal is not the right word but he literally is just it's very basic instinct there that's going on and so he is very He's very set on living a comfortable life, being able to touch boobs and being satisfied. And that comes from him having such a tragic background. And so you see that very much so compared to other characters in the book who are involved in community things that I'm trying to not spoil like involved in community things that deal with ridding the community of these devils are very much so structured. They have a vision, they have a goal and they're not just in it for the money they there's something that is motivating them behind it whereas then just kind of like i mean as long as i get fed well and treated right like i just don't care and so when he meets this woman like it's the first kind of positive human interaction that he has but it's almost not really positive interaction when you really think about it in the grand scheme of things it's not really positive human interaction because she uses a power play which I mean, I couldn't respect it, but she looks at him like, like he's a dog. And so he is willing to behave in such a manner because it allows him to live a comfortable life, which he's never lived. It allows him to have some type of human, positive human connection, which he hasn't ever had. So it's very complicated in that sense, but I think it comes across as very like immature, which is why I can see why people are like, oh my gosh, this boy is obsessed with boobs. Like who cares? Like this is so immature. This is so little kid. Like we do this when we're like eight, nine years old like why are you obsessed with boobs so much and so it does it does read immature but I don't know if Fujimoto was trying to create these more complex themes or really tie into the fact that we're we're losing human or I should say not we're losing it but Denji has lost that human interaction so it's very childlike in some ways because of the lack of human interaction I I don't know I, I think that that's why I'm kind of like this is a three-star read for me not the best start to a series but I also think that there are things that can be done with this series that I may actually end up enjoying and it definitely is you know on the gory side a lot of slasher type things going on but some some aspects of human emotion like studying human emotion are very much so present in this and I really do appreciate that and I like that so I will be continuing on with the series I do have volume two on my shelf I'm going to give it a few volumes and see how I feel about it and then decide if I want to continue on with it all right y'all so this is my first this is not my first time doing this <laughs> I shouldn't say like well, this is my first time doing first impression it's not my first time doing first impressions I've done first impressions before this is my first time doing first impressions on this channel so if this is something that you would like to continue to see maybe something that's like thematically I know that Shay does a lot of like try a volume out or like she'll do a vlog of reading the first volume of a lot of series and kind of talk about stuff like that which I enjoy watching those because it gives me kind of recommendations or stuff that maybe I'm like eh, I may not like that depending upon how she describes it but if you like getting introduced to new series like this and I would be willing to also do it for trades or you know just new comic book series that I'm starting I definitely would be happy to do that let me know in the comment box below if that's something that you would like to see as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications and if you're looking for ways to follow me on social media all the links will be down in the description box below and i'll be back with another video soon